Hi, it's Robert Constantine, the Vision Rehab OT, today for visionmechanic.net. Today we're talking about depth perception. So depth perception is uh, something I hear a lot of therapists talking about. They observe behaviors, sometimes in patients, and they say, well, this patient appears to have poor depth perception. So we're going to talk about how we assess that and what exactly does depth perception mean. So we're going to start with that first. So depth perception is the ability to tell what's near and what's far, what's closest to us. This affects safety a lot. Things like uh, folks walking up and down stairs, depth perception is important. Um, it also includes things like when our kids are going to going to jump off of a off of something, and being having able to have good depth perception is going to help them um, to land and be safe and feel confident about doing those sort of things. So there is um, the, the mechanism for depth perception in a, in, in, in a neurotypical situation. Um, what happens is, is your brain takes an image, um, the image from the left eye and the image from the right eye. And these two images are slightly different because of the position of your eyes on your head. You can hold your thumb up and um, close one eye and then you close the other. And you're going to see that those images are just a little bit different. So the brain is able to process and fuse those two images together. And it, or it gives us binocular cues for how far away something is. So we call that binocular depth perception or stereopsis. Now, this doesn't mean that if you only have one eye that you don't have depth perception. Uh, brains are amazing organs. They're able to figure out other visual cues that help a person who only has one eye figure out if something's near or far. Things like the size of the object and the color density, the color saturation sort of of the object. As something gets further away, the colors look a little washed out. They tend to look a little more blurred as something gets far away. And the brain can become very efficient at using these monocular cues for depth um, and still allow a patient who only has one eye to, to drive and even do things like catch a baseball and those sort of things. So um, being monocular is not ideal, but our brains figure it out and these patients are typically able to function quite well. So let's talk about stereopsis and how do we assess for binocular depth perception or stereopsis. There's two ways we do this. Um, the eye doctors do this in the clinic, or we can do this in vision rehabilitation. So the first one is using, um, so these glasses are polarized and using what they call a randot or this um, assessment here. So what happens is when you have the glasses on, one of the circles within those diamonds appears to be floating closer than the other three. And what we do is, is we have the patient just point out, tell me a number one, which dot looks closest, number two, number three, and we go on with that. That um, Those measurements are in a unit called ARC, A-R-C. How many arcs of depth perception does a patient have? And those numbers are there on those. Um, the lower set of symbols are called Lee symbols. And sometimes they're a little easier um, f to see because the, the difference uh, between the two is a little bigger. So arc sort of measures how fine of a distance between near and far is the, is the, uh, the person able to see. Um, how, how close together can the near object and far object be and the patient still be able to tell that that is what's near and what's far. And that's measured in arc. And those numbers on, the, on this test here, they go from 400 down to 20. This is only half the test. There's a second part that has a fly on it. And um, that's done sometimes with kids where they just want, uh, the doctor says, so tell me, do you see the, you know, where's the, where's the wings for the fly? And as they look at that with good stereopsis, they're able to see those wings up close. So this test comes from Burnell.com, B-E-R-N-E-L-L. -L, and it's about $200. Um, a little less expensive, but sort of using a similar um, kind of technology, a similar kind of principle rather. There's not a lot of technology. Um, these are red and green glasses here. And you look at images in this assessment here that use that red-green difference in order to give us um, stereopsis. So this has a, a far test. These are done at uh, 2 meters at 10 feet. 
and in each row in the in the uh, in the one and, and two here, one of those appears floating and one does not. So they have to pick out which one is floating there, and that's at a distance. And there's also a near assessment here, um, where they tell us which uh, which of the players are floating. And down at the bottom part here, they have to tell you which one is floating up and which is floating down. And then there's the uh, the diamonds like we saw in the other test. So this has near-far tests, and it has several different ones. Those, um, because the pictures are pretty well set, the kids, uh, younger patients, tend to do pretty well with them. Sort of the standard that gives you a little less cues, these are called Randot tests. And the, um, the Randot tests, as you look at that, you can see you can't tell what's floating in there until you put the glasses on. And when you put those red glasses on, you see um, different shapes floating. Uh, I found with this, this works okay for adults because they're able to tell you that's a triangle, that's a plus. The kids sometimes see something floating, but they're not real sure what it is. So I tend to use the other one of the more uh, static pictures um, to, uh, to uh, assess stereopsis in my children. So this test is um, a little bit cheaper. It's, uh, it's around 179 or so. And uh, you get it from as well from Burnell.com. That's available there. So um, when a patient has poor stereopsis, as you're screening this, this is something where uh, if it's an adult patient, we're gonna ask them about their history. Do they have a history of amblyopia or lazy eye? Do they have a history of um, something like uh, a, a reason where they have only monocular vision? Do, are they having a problem with a cataract in one eye? So we're going to have to go into those sort of um, vision history questions with our adult patients. With our kids as well, we're going to be asking mom and dad about, you know, does he have a, a lazy eye or amblyopia, um, anything like that. And when they're not sure, these are certainly going to be conditions that we have to get investigated by the eye doctor. So when you find a patient with poor um, stereopsis, um, particularly with no stereopsis, that's going to be something um, when mom and dad aren't aware of anything, this is going to be something that has to be investigated by the eye doctor. So you're going to want to get that referral and get that taken care of. So I hope we learned a little bit today about depth perception, binocular depth perception or stereopsis, some ways to assess that. Um, stay tuned here at visionmechanic.net for more great information on visual rehabilitation. I'm Robert Constantine, the Vision Rehab OT. You have a great day.